<clears throat> Hi VC, uh, Dark Dove, Dave, back with you again. Um, yeah, so quite a bit of stuff to show you. Um, I've, some other items which I picked up, um, you know, if anyone remembers my last video, that big haul of 90 stuff that I got. Um, I have a couple of more items which I picked up since from that same haul uh, when I made a return visit. Um, uh, also, I have an RSD item to show, plus some other stuff going back over the last couple of months. Also some VCLT. Uh, I met Ben Costello uh, last weekend, not, not this weekend, but the, the weekend prior to that, which was the Easter weekend. Uh, I gave him the stuff which I picked up, uh, which which I showed, most of which I showed in my in the last video, but I also picked up another item since. So uh, he gave me some very nice stuff as well. Um, one of the things he gave me was actually a poster. Um, uh, this is for a, a Dinosaur Junior gig. Um, th he picked this up in Galway. Now, he wasn't actually at the gig itself. I think the gig had already... Um, has already gone but uh, he just grabbed this uh it was in galway or actually no sorry may the 10th oh 2010 monday may the 10th 2010 i didn't actually notice that <laughs> sorry ben i actually didn't notice that just until now the year on it uh it's actually from seven years ago um <laughs> okay. i know uh i need glasses um yeah so the black box galway uh dinosaur junior um, very nice poster. Thanks very much for that, um, Ben. Um, he also gave me a couple of um, uh, two two albums and a, and a seven inch single. Um, Soft Cell, uh, Torch. Uh, it's from eighty one, I believe, or eighty two, maybe. I think I'm sure this is from their second album, uh, The Art of Falling Apart, on the. Uh, some bizarre label. Uh, really nice um, picture sleeve on that. And two albums, one of which is one that had long been on my want list. I'm really grateful to receive this. That is June the 1st, 1974, Kevin Ayers, John Cale, Eno and Nico. Uh, this is an album of, of a concert which took place, as the title indicates, on June the 1st, 1974. Uh, I was six months old, um, so I wasn't at it. Um, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, the, these four, four of these you know, musical giants. Uh, plus, um, also uh, uh, on this are Mike Oldfield, um, and Robert Wyatt, also, and um, who else? Is uh yeah so um yeah so the, yeah a live concert recorded there's like each um of the titled artists contributed um um like eno contributed um driving me backwards babies on fire um nico uh performs the end of cover of the door song um uh John Cale does a really, really excellent uh, cover of um, Heartbreak Hotel, which is also uh, appears on the album Slow Dazzle. Now, personally, I, I, out of this album, my favourite contributions come from um, Kevin Ayers. Um, uh, he contributes um, most of, yeah, pretty much all of Side B is taken up with Kevin Ayers. So um, um, now this is an original pressing on Ireland, and it's on that um, the pink rim label. So thank you very much for that, Ben. It's a, it's something that I've been on my want list uh, for for quite a long time. So I'm very grateful for that. Now <clears throat> he also gave me. And this also is just this is an absolutely excellent um, piece of piece of BCLT. This is um, uh, Michael Honig and uh, Departure from the Northern Hemisphere. Is that 
Oh no, sorry, the Departure from the Northern Wasteland is the full title of this album. Uh, Michael Honig, um, German musician, uh, previously linked with um, Tangerine Dream, and I think, is it Agitation Free? I think it might have been Agitation Free as well, but um, this is a very much Berlin School um, synthesizer album. Uh, it came out in 1978 on the... Um, on Warner Brothers. Um, yeah, so very much, um, very much kind of um, in line with, say, that kind of Tangerine Dream type um, Berlin School. And uh, the, the final track is is just amazing. Um, uh, it is what is the final track? But yeah, Sun and Moon, uh, the the track that closes it. Yeah, this is this is just a classic album. Um, yeah, what can I say? Um, a fantastic VCLT uh, from Ben. Um, in particular, does two two fantastic um, albums there. Okay, so as I said, um, I'll get on to Record Store Day while, while it's still fresh in people's memory. Uh, yeah, so it was Saturday. Um, I, I, Last year's one, for, for me personally anyway, was a real disappointment. Last year was the first in a long time that I didn't buy anything, and I, I didn't have huge hopes for this one. Um, I, I kind of half forgotten about it, to be quite honest, and I went I went to my local participating store. Uh, there, now, I was a bit low on money, um, I, and I'll tell you the, the reason in a minute. Um, I saw several items there which really, any one of which, uh, I said there, there was a Sunra reissue, also um, uh, Pop Old Vu, uh, the soundtrack to the movie Cobra Verde, but uh, I thought it was quite expensive that. Um, anyway, I ended up going with, um, this is what I picked up, uh, my only uh, pickup on for Record Store Day. Uh, this is the Duretti column, uh, short stories for Pauline. Uh, the Duretti column... Uh, basically, basically one man band, Vinnie Riley, uh, part of the Manchester scene, and you know one of those uh, Manchester uh, artists who recorded on um, Factory Records. Uh, this was originally recorded in 1983, but uh, it but it was shelved, and it was it was came out for the first time in 2012. And uh, this this is a so this is um it's been. A special edition which has come out again for Record Store Day. Um, it's one of five, uh, 500 copies. Uh, and it is on clear vinyl. I will just be a little bit awkward opening it there. Let's try and show it to you. There we go. And I can't fault the pressing. It sounds sounds perfect to me. Very very quiet pressing. Uh, this album, for anybody who's familiar with uh, Vinnie Riley, uh, he has this very particular kind of minimalistic um, uh, guitar style. Um, it's yeah, it's, side one sounds has a very kind of um, almost kind of modern classical feel. Uh, there's a few. Uh, guest performers on here playing uh, there's viola um harp uh saxophone uh, there's a lot of use of harp actually um yeah it has a kind of chamber piece quality well particularly side one side two um has some vocals um some of the tracks um uh, then i think have a slightly more say Joy Division kind of a feel, or Joy Division, or kind of early New Order kind of a, a feel to them. But uh, yeah, I'm really glad I picked up this album because um, uh, I really have very little by um, Duretti Column, and um, I haven't seen anybody else show this, so um, I know there is there is only 500 copies, so um, certainly glad I picked it up, but. Um, I would have probably picked up one or two more or other RSD items, but I happened to call into the same 
before I, I, I went to that participating store, uh, I called into the same uh, shop, the same records, kind of record stroke bookshop, where I found that big hole, uh, which I showed in my last video, that, that big hole of 90s, 90s pressings. And I found two items, um, kind of almost just browsing. First off, um, <clears throat> now that's uh, that's this is an, an album sleeve which a lot of you will will recognise. A uh, very well known kind of seminal album cover. Stiff little fingers, inflammable material. Uh, this is uh, this is released by Stiff Little Fingers, a uh, punk band from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Uh, this was released on Rough Trade in 1979. Um, now, it's, it appears that this is an Irish pressing, a relatively rareish, well, kind of scarce Irish pressing, uh, which glows. It's. Okay, I can't really show you it here, but it, it's kind of translucent under a light. Um, yeah, this is a seminal album. Uh, it, uh, it became one of the biggest selling uh, albums on an independent label uh, at the time when it was released. And it's one of those record albums that really kind of brought a rough trade label um, into the public domain. And this is actually this was produced by um, Mayo Thompson of the um, Red Crayola, uh, who was you know Red Crayola at the time. Um, were on rough trade. Uh, but um, yeah, this is um, <clears throat> very much kind of rough and ready punk. Uh, a lot of the songs are about the, um, the troubles uh, in Nor in Northern Ireland, which were going on at the time. Um, Alternative Ulster, that's a kind of real famous anthem song in it. Uh, personally, my favourite song on this is um, Johnny Was, which is a cover of a, um, a Bob Marley uh, song. Yeah, so uh, it, it's a hard enough album to find, in, you know, well, it, in, I'd say in good condition. And this one is in pretty good nick, um, you know. Um, and also, I, at the same time, um, I also picked up this. Um, <clears throat> this is by Sugar. Uh, Sugar, the band that Bob Mould uh set up after um, the breakup of um, Husker Du. So they were active in the early 90s, early to mid 90s, I think. I think they released three albums in total, this being their last one. Uh, this is called File Under Easy Listening. And this came out in 1994. Um, this is an original UK pressing on, um, on Creation Records, Creation Records, which uh, yeah, as you probably all know, it's the label that um, Oasis recorded on. Uh, on uh, in her sheet as well. Uh, yeah, so their first, yeah, the first album, Copper Blue, which came out in '92. That's an absolute classic. Um, this is, yeah, this is pretty, it wouldn't be, qu doesn't quite grab me as much as Copper Blue does, but uh, I think it's an album that requires, you know, repeat listenings. Um, so far I've only listened to it once. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Sugar, um, yeah, Bob Mould, the former, former guitarist of Husker Du, um, File Under Easy Listening, a rather, uh, 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 yeah, ironic title, because it's far from me, you know. Um, yeah, the, so the two of them, uh, I, did, I, did, I wasn't expecting to find anything in there. I was just kind of browsing casually, but yeah, the two of them were eight euros each, so um, I couldn't. Which is pretty, you know, I thought it was a pretty good price, so I, I couldn't just leave them behind. But that just resulted in me only picking up, making only one RSD pickup then. Um, okay, um, I, I stick to just just returning again to that big haul of 1990s vinyl which I showed last week. Uh, by the way, um, I think I'm going to be hanging on to this um, Enter the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, I know I kind of indicated that I might sell it in, in last week's video, but um, uh, I've listened to it. I really, really, really like this. and uh, I think I will be hanging on to it. 
Um, but anyway, I've I picked up a few more items um, while they were still there. Uh, I think I got there just in time. Um, the 12 inch by the Sugar Cubes. Um, this is the very last single they released. And this is called um, Leash Called Love. And uh, this was released on. Let's come out on again. Uh, oh, yeah, it came out on Electra in 1992. It's kind of a dancey, dance remix. Um, it does have that very early 90s kind of dance feel to it, but it really is a superb single. And um, yeah, uh, not too long after this came out, Bjork um, went off to do her own solo thing. So that was the end of the Sugar Cubes. And this was their swan song this um the single um also picked up um okay um also picked up this this is this is by carol craig and this album is called land cruising now this album is an absolute um classic of um well uh, detroit school techno um this came out in 1995 um <clears throat> it's a piece of techno but it does have a little bit of a um has a slight bit of a berlin school feel to it um yeah so carol craig is an absolute um seminal figure in basically in electronic music kind of you know from say late 80s onwards uh it's a double double album on um oh warner music uh yeah so that was eight euros as well um so which is which is pretty good for that album because it's quite um generally it goes for quite a quite a lot more than that um i also um <clears throat> Also picked up this uh, 12 inch single, which is also um, linked with Carol Craig. Uh, this is basically Carol Craig under a diff under a different name. This is um, <clears throat> Interzone Orchestra, uh, Bug in the Bass Bin. This came out on Mowax Records in '96, and um, this is kind of more a bit more drum and bass influenced, I think, rather than straight out techno. Um, um, as I said in my last video, there was a lot of drum and bass stuff, a lot of, there was a lot of stuff I left behind, and I went back a couple of days after I grabbed those three items there, but a lot of the rest of the stuff had been snapped up, and um, it was another, some, a guy from another record store in town, because I, I, I happened to see a lot of the stuff in, the, in their store when I popped this other store in town uh, a few days later, and... Um, so a lot of that stuff, that, 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 um, there was a few albums like Goldie, um, a lot of pretty rare stuff, you know, but um, anyway, I'm very happy with, uh, with what I did grab. Um, anyway, okay, moving on. Uh, this is a Discogs purchase. Um, now, I, I, I've been trying to cut down on, on buying stuff on Discogs because, you know, I, you get that big uh, bill, you know, you get that big visa bill at the end of the month but anyway this is one that had been on my want list for a long time this is one that you know i really this is you know okay um <clears throat> the third ear band uh music from macbeth uh this is the soundtrack album to the roman polanski movie version of macbeth uh, which came out in 71. Uh, this soundtrack was released in 1972 on uh, the Harvest label. Now, the Third Ear Band were uh, an experimental, kind of psychedelic folk group active in England in the late 60s, early 70s. I think they released about four albums in total. This is their third one um, quite hard to, to, to define this but it's kind of basically has a kind of 
medieval a strong in influence of European medieval folk mixed in with a kind of Eastern um, Indian influence also. But there's some, there's some use of electronic. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very dark, very moody um, uh, album. Um, quite unlike a, a lot of what was, you know, they're quite, quite dark compared to a lot of um, the other psychedelic bands which were active at the time. Um, it, it's one that had been on my want list for a long time, um, so um, uh, so grab this. Um, it's, and it's an absolutely perfect copy, and it's in, it's in really, really nice condition. Uh, can I just add as well that um, the play Macbeth? Um, I I do a bit of am well, I, I used to do not so much nowadays, but I used to do uh, quite a bit of amateur dramatics, um, and I actually played the lead role in Macbeth. Uh, yes, I know uh, we're supposed to call it a Scottish play, but. I, I don't want to bother with that nonsense. Uh, yes, I, I play the um, lead role um, in 2004. But um, anyway, <coughs> enough of that. Now, the next item <coughs> is something which is pretty musically quite similar. And it <coughs> came out roughly around the same time. Uh, quite, quite, quite similar, not a million miles, not a million miles away from a third year band. Comos, uh, first utterance. Um, yeah, a lot of you in the VC would be familiar with this. Uh, I I don't think I need to tell you that this is definitely not. Uh, this is definitely not first pressing because first pressings of this are insanely rare and they go for um, four figures basically. Uh, this came out in 1971 on Dawn Records originally. Um, yeah, so Comos first utterance. Uh, again, Comos. They're a band who, basically, on on the on the surface, are folk, but definitely not folk as we know it. This is kind of um, apocalyptic folk, very disturbing folk music, uh, with a strong dose of very dark psychedelia, and dealing with kind of. Uh, very weird and dark themes. Uh, I, I, I came across this quite randomly in my local independence um, record store. Um, uh, this is the same store which was doing RSD, but uh, this is uh, this is I found this in their second-hand section. Um, this is a reissue from 2010 on Rise Above Records, and uh, it's on green splatter vinyl. Uh, this is a, yeah. This is actually an edition of 500, which came out in 2010. Uh, there were oh, yeah. There were I think there was a few other different variations released as well. There was red, uh, purple, I think etc. This is the green splatter version. So uh, yeah, this is an album that it was on my mantras for a long time as well. Uh, it was a little pricey. Uh, I think I paid pretty much about what it goes for. Um, you know this this particular store. You, you just you, you, yeah, you you, you you won't pick up anything really cheap there. They they know the value of stuff. So, uh, but anyway, you know I'm I, I got it for what you know kind of about what you'd expect to pay for this um, for this reissue. So um, happy with that. It, it was on my want list a long time. Okay, I'm just gonna briefly go back again to the same store. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm sorry, I'm kind of. This is, um, this is the same store where I made all, where I found all the 1990s pressings yet again. Now I, I found this actually a few weeks before I, I came across those. Um, I was just randomly browsing in there. I was browsing through the classical section actually, and there was quite a big classical section in there. And I came across this. I was drawn to the cover. I thought, oh, yeah, this looks really unusual. Um, yeah, this is by an artist, a lady called, um, she records under the name uh, Ferouz. I'm uh, not sure of her full name, but, but that is the name that she records under. Uh, she is from uh, Lebanon. And you, that is actually a, ma a map of Lebanon there. Um, yeah, she's an Arabic uh, singer. 
Um, this, I suppose this could be best described as kind of almost like a, an Arabic, a Lebanese take on the kind of French chanson style. It does have a kind of a, you know, it does have a Middle Eastern feel, but it's a bit of a, you know, a bit, bit of a French um, kind of chanson thing going on as well. Uh, apparently, she's very, she's very big in the in the, in the Arab world. Apparently, um, uh, I think this probably probably came out in the fifties. Um, it, it is a French pressing on on Pathé. and <clears throat> rather an unusual find, and uh, it only cost me three euros, which is which is nothing. So I thought definitely. Yeah, I'll grab that. Um, cause it's the kind of thing you very rarely come across. Um, very rarely come across uh, here in, in where I'm from. Uh, it's probably the kind of thing now, maybe in France. You know, you probably come across stuff like this. It's probably quite easy to find, but uh, certainly, um, yes, you certainly don't come across stuff like this in the wild very often here. So I grabbed this, and uh, yeah, I really like it. Um, I'll finish up just one more show. Uh, this is something I picked up a couple of months ago. Uh, for, it was only two euros. Um, Breaking Glass, Hazel O'Connor. Uh, yeah, it's a very common album. This is one I see around all the time, but uh, it's usually thrashed. Uh, it's one of those ones you tend to, you know, you come across it in, in charity shops, but um, it's usually in very, very poor condition. Whenever I see it, for some reason, it's just always thrashed. But this one's pretty. This is in pretty decent nick. Uh, yeah, this came out. This is the soundtrack to a movie which came out in 1980. It's uh, basically kind of a story of this kind of, uh, you know, it's just kind of play, uh, Hazel O'Connor kind of playing a fictionalized version of herself, I suppose. And it's all about against this backdrop of, um, you know, England in the early 80s and. Um, National Front, uh, kind of far right riots and kind of uh, political situation at the time. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a, I remember seeing the movie years ago on the TV, and there's some really decent um, songs on this. Um, uh, so one, there's one song in particular which is his really famous saxophone solo. Uh, I just can't think which which one is it just no uh, kind of escapes so anyway um, yeah decent album but worth grabbing if you see it but don't pay a lot for it because it is very very common um, but um, yeah it came out of an A&M records okay so that's it uh, we're nearly at half an hour uh, I'll leave it at, at that so um, thanks very much for watching everybody and um, yeah, have a good week.